We'll talk a little bit about what chiropractors do. Everybody said they've been to the chiropractor and they know kind of what chiropractors do. Um, there's a lot of things that we do and there's a lot of things we don't do. We do not cure anybody. I don't know. I don't care what people say. We're not going to cure anything. So if you have a cancer, you probably don't need to go to a chiropractor. If you have a broken bone, you probably don't need to go to a chiropractor. If you have some sort of disease process, it's probably most likely you don't go to a chiropractor. But if you have like a soft tissue muscle skeletal injury, and what those are, those type of examples like a motor vehicle accident, a sports injury, a neck pain, back pain, joint pain, tendon and ligament, ligament in injuries like a sprain or strain, muscle tightness and spasms, chiropractic, massage therapy, and I said physical medicine as my, um, as my name of this uh, thing, are probably some of your better examples you can go to. Now, you can go to the medical doctor, and they do great jobs, but what they're probably going to do is give you some sort of medication. And what medication is a lot of times is that it masks the symptoms. Now, I'm not bashing medication. Because if you have a thyroid problem and you do not create an, enough um, thyroxin or enough, enough thyroid um, hormone, then you may need a thyroid medication to regulate that. But if you're going to uh, try to get rid of pain, pain medication is just going to mask those symptoms. You go to the next slide, Sharon. Um, types of pain that most people experience. Um, most of the time, uh, pain is the motivator, I always like to say in my clinic. Um, and acute pain is what usually people come in for. Um, people don't usually come in for their chronic pain. They wait till it becomes an acute pain. Uh, an example of that is I played baseball for 37 years. Um, I wasn't that good, but I, I did get a scholarship. But I enjoyed playing, but I injured my shoulder not once, but over time, and it started to degener degenerate a lot quicker. So it became a chronic pain, but I get acute flare-ups of that pain. So basically, the symptoms will come. They'll come in a fast, quick like uh, experience, but it's more likely because of my chronic pain. Usually acute pain is, is associated with a trauma type accident or injury. So I was raking leaves, uh, I twisted real quick, or I lifted something that causes my uh, sharp spasms, that's acute pain. But it could also be I have a chronic low back pain and I tried to do too much and that caused my acute pain. So there's a little bit of difference there, but they could be the same if, especially in our older population as we get older. Not calling anybody old because my oldest patient is 97, my youngest is two days. So they all have different issues. So let's go to the next slide. So type of therapies that basically um, you can do while, while trying to um, decrease pain and trying to control pain. Um, you can do adjustments. That's what chiropractors do. You can do traction or decompression, decompression therapy for neck and lower back. These are more in, uh, entailed therapies. Uh, these are usually for disc-related patients. I put patients uh, on there for that have just low back injuries that where their where their body just gets out of alignment pretty much. Intersegmental traction. If you've ever been to a, a physical therapist or a chiropractor, you've had that little rolly table. That's an intersegmental traction. East or ultrasound therapy. Those are therapies that help with muscle spasm and decrease uh, um, uh, scar tissue or increase blood flow. Uh, deep tissue laser is a newer therapy, but it gets great results with a cellular response. We've all heard of massage therapy and massage therapists. I work closely with them, and they will do a fantastic job. Uh, the next few are, are newer to uh, most uh, clinics. Uh, osteoarthritis injections, those are for joint injections. PRP injections, that is protein-rich plasma, and, I, and I'll talk about this a little bit more. Stem cells, a big buzzword, but also very effective. Um, just watch out, and if you have questions about that, ask somebody that's qualified because they can be very expensive. And you want to make sure that the practitioner is doing it the right way and not the wrong way. And then nutritional supplements. You know, the great thing about nutritional supplements, um, of course, if you buy a Sam's Club and not knock on Sam's Club, you're going to get what you pay for pretty much, right? Um, but if you buy a good nutritional supplement, the worst case scenario is if your body doesn't use it, it's going to get rid of it naturally. So it's not going to cause any other side effect unless you're taking ridiculous amounts of the nutritional supplement. So I like to say, if you have a vitamin D deficiency, try a nutritional supplement first, so a vitamin D product. If you have an iron deficiency, try an iron uh, supplement first, because again, worst case scenario, your body kind of just gets rid of it, uses the restroom, it goes out of you. So, all right, next slide. So some of the advantages of chiropractic, it's a holistic approach. Basically it means that they're, we're trying to manage your pain, we're trying to, one, get rid of pain, we're trying to stabilize and strengthen. That should be your approach with anything. You know, you're going to try to get rid of the pain. 
You're going to try to stabilize and strengthen. And if you can do that, then that's going to set the body up later on to advance or to um, to uh, achieve the, the, the or maintain what we call a normal lifestyle. Um, there's also natural substances that kind of actually do, do decrease joint pain, decrease inflammation, less muscles. I talked about some of those therapies that you can use. And then most of the time when you try a holistic approach, let's forget about chiropractic. Let's say massage or physical therapy. The object is to keep people out of pain and also keep them out of any unnecessary surgeries or any unnecessary medication. So, all right, let's go to the next one. You know, everybody's always worried about spinal manipulations. I've been doing this 20 years now, and I, I like to say I'm good at what I do. I've never killed anybody, so, you know, I guess that's a pretty good thing. Um, so everybody's worried about the adjustments and manipulations. All that is is we're trying to get the body to go back to some sort of normal uh, mechanical way that it used to perform before the injury. That's basically what it is. Um, the neck adjustment's a little more, uh, a little more uh, I guess, shocking to people because it's in the neck. You hear it. The low back and the mid back are usually more uh, alleviated. There's different types of forces you can use too. Like I said before, uh, my youngest patient's two days old. My oldest patient's 97. Obviously, I'm not going to treat them the same way I would treat one of my athletes or one of my uh, one of my kids. Um, so it's just it's just regular adjustments uh, that can can help maintain the the uh, the, the spine and get get things moving properly. And the reason why spinal manipulations are important is that if that if that um, that joint is out of place. The muscles, which a massage therapist can help with, can, uh, can start to go into spasm. Once those spasms are released, we want to get the joint moving in the better direction. That's going to, in turn, start to heal that area a little bit quicker. So let's go to the next one. Decompression therapy, we talked about that. Usually, um, there's, uh, these are more involved cases where people have disc injuries or they have um, uh, maybe a, a bulging or herniated disc. And again, they don't want to go to surgery. You know, um, I deal with some great surgeons in the area and I value their opinion, but a lot of times what they'll try to do first is give them medication. Uh, next, they'll try to do injections, which are usually cortisone or, or, or um, some sort of uh, injection that's going to calm or decrease the inflammation. Then the next thing they try to do is a radio frequency ablation, and that's going to desensitize the nerves. And then the last step is usually surgery. Well, surgery is not always the answer. So if we can do some therapies that are going to help alleviate those signs and symptoms, that's what you want to do. Whether you see a chiropractor, a physical therapist, or a massage therapist, you want to do as much as you can without going to the surgeon first. All right, next therapy, please. Ultrasound uh, and e-stem e therapy. Usually people have had some sort of e-stem therapy. Um, that's usually the pads that uh, you get put on you, and then they turn the electricity up. And what that's doing is that's driving current to the muscles, and usually the muscles are in spasm, and that's where you feel the pain. You don't necessarily feel the pain from getting out of alignment uh, because most of the time we're out of alignment, but the pain comes from the muscles that are sending signals to the brain saying, hey, something's going on here. Don't move in this position. If you do, I'm going to give you that little shock, and you're going to know that, and you're going to drop to the ground or whatever that happens. So that's usually uh, what we're trying to do is break up some of that muscle spasm, increase some of that blood flow to that injured area. So next slide, please. So, you know, you hear about, a lot about uh, motor vehicle accidents because obviously people, there's a lot of traffic on the road. I heard you guys talking about traffic earlier. Um, and it's traffic starting to pick back up, you know. So uh, after a motor vehicle accident or after any injury for that matter, the first thing that we do as, as a human being is we kind of assess ourselves and say, well, look, I'm not dying. I'm not broken. I'm not bleeding. So I must be okay. And then the adrenaline kicks in. And so we're shocked, stunned, and they're mad at the person that hit us or whatever we hit. And then so adrenaline takes over and those endorphins start rushing in. So we don't really feel necessarily the neck pain we may be having or the low back pain or the mid back pain that we may be having because we're kind of caught up in the moment. So what happens is after those endorphins wear off, we get home, we start relaxing. If we can relax and not having to take care of the kids or the family or whatever else that happens, then what happens is the muscles and, and the, the tissue starts to set in and we start feeling that weird feeling. Maybe we're getting stiff, tight. Maybe we're getting headaches. Maybe we're getting low back pain. Maybe we're getting things that are not what we used to have before. And that's the body saying, hey, there's something going on. So it's always good to get checked out, whether after some sort of trauma. I fell. It wasn't that big of a deal. I get it. But your body is sending you signals to say, hey, it'll be a bigger deal. And especially as we get older, it's going to be a bigger deal. So a lot of times it comes as an achy pain, a stiffness, a tightness, maybe some headaches, things like that. And again, it goes from that acute pain into chronic if we, if we uh, disassociate from it, and then we start to compensate for it. Compensation is a big thing that we do until eventually the pain 
becomes the motivator. So let's go to the next tree. Next slide. And then, you know, treatment protocols after the uh, uh, motor vehicle accident or after any trauma, it should be regular. You know, in the, in the beginning, you want to, again, get rid of the pain. You want to stabilize and you want to strengthen. And if you can do that, that that's going to improve your odds of the injury getting better quicker. Um, a lot of times we wish we could go to the gym for one time and be okay. I always tell my patients is if you come in and I get you better after one visit, I want you to put a lot more money on the counter because I'm really good at what I do. But that's not usually what happens. The body starts compensating for any type of injury you have, and then it creates that compensation pattern. So if my knee is a little sore, I'm going to lean to the other side, and I'm going to basically walk a little differently. As I walk a little differently, now I'm going to start having some um, other issues in my, my lower back. So again, compensation patterns happen after trauma usually. Let's go to the next one. So these are just some examples, and I, I don't want to scare you with these, but these are examples of x-rays that I see on, on a daily basis. And I always like to say, nobody ever comes in normal. So most of the time when you go see uh, treatment at either a massage therapist, a chiropractor, or a physical therapist, or you're going to any other doctor, you're not going in normal. You know, how many people really go for wellness checkups anymore, right? You go to the dentist because basically they tell you every six months, I want you to come back. They're going to take x-rays of your teeth. They're going to try to find something what's going on with your teeth. Hopefully your teeth are great. Same thing with, uh, with neck and back pain and, and some of these other injuries. Nobody ever comes in normal. The, one, the far left one there you see of the full body there, that, is a, that was a younger patient's spine, and we caught that early. Um, that was a scoliosis, so that can happen without people even knowing about it. The next slide where you see the neck and the neck is going very forward, that is an older patient. That's advanced degeneration in the lower portion of their neck. And then the other one is, again, a scoliosis. That's the lower back of that first patient. Um, and then the last one is a patient that was involved in a, in a car accident. That's a whiplash type injury because what's happened is the neck is straight now. Now, are any of these patients going to die? No. But are they going to have lifelong issues? Yes, they definitely could. Now, is there much I can do for that scoliosis patient? Well, we can stabilize it. You can strengthen that, right? So that can happen. This is a, a um, you go to the next slide, Jerry. Um, and this is a, a case of a patient after uh, one month treatment. So basically they have a before, this was a 10 uh, year old uh, little girl. And unfortunately guys, time is off, uh, not on our side anymore. As we get older, our problems get worse. You know, at, at a young age, we can correct problems if we get in quicker. So we do have a big, uh, we do see, chiropractors do see, or physical medicine people do see a big population of kids when they have injuries or falls or things like that. So, you know, these are some of the examples of what uh, patients can come in and out of after they've had some sort of treatment. So let's go to the next one. Sports injuries, you know, that's, that tells a, a, a story. You know, most people get injured and they're weekend warriors. Um, you know, I do see a lot of pro athletes, um, but most of the patients are weekend warrior type injuries and they cause trauma to the body. And again, we have to go to work on Monday. So if we hurt ourselves on Saturday, we don't do anything about it. And if it's not too bad, we're just going to kind of push it to the side. So, and that's for most people, you know, most people don't look for networking groups until they're looking for a network group, right? And then they look for that network group because they need to do something else for their business. So, you know, I, I kind of, like I said, knew in the beginning, I wanted to get involved in a networking group because I knew it would be good for my business. So let's go to the next slide. Another thing about sports injuries and, and how you can treat them. Again, I work closely with massage therapists and massage therapists work closely with chiropractors. I work cl closely with medical doctors. You know, a lot of medical doctors, if they don't have the answer or they don't have the the medication, they kind of just send you along your way. You go to a physical therapist and we work closely with physical therapists. Uh, we're trying to, again, stabilize and strengthen the area. After a patient has a surgery, what they're doing is they send them to physical therapy to try to get that joint working better again after the surgical procedure, whether it's a neck surgery or a low back surgery or a knee surgery or a shoulder surgery. Those things are all trying to improve on what's going on there. How am I doing on time, Sharon? Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, regenerative medicine, you know, the next slide. Um, so these are new buzzwords you may hear about. And if you ever hear about these, you know, and you have a question, please just call somebody. Call somebody that you trust, that you know, like, and trust. I mean, uh, I would do the same if I was looking for a plumber in our group, you know. Um, but call somebody you know, like, and trust because there's a lot of money out there that these physicians are making and they're doing not so quality work. And I'm not saying that we do better quality work than they do, but the thing is, is that when regenerative medicine is a, is a kind of people don't know about it much anymore, uh, or, or now they're, they're basically learning about it. But with this regenerative medicine, it's pretty cool because your body has a unique ability to heal itself. So if we did nothing, we would start compensating, and that's kind of a form of, of our body healing itself. 
But if we start doing things that can, without medicine, that, that helps, helps uh, achieve some of the goals or helps in, improve, we always like to say, improve the quality of life using some of these tools, then that's a good thing, right? So regenerative medicine is one of the new buzzwords. You hear of like PRP or, or stem cell therapy or um, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, you've got new, um, amniotic fluid supplements, that, those type of things. So those are all things that you hear about. And again, you wanna make sure you go to a quality physician that's gonna do quality work um, because that, it, you can spend a lot of money and not get anything out of it. You know, they're, they're, there's a lot of people, or there's some people out there that are trying to sell you something too. So, um, all right, let's go to the next one. So osteoarthritis is one of the most common things that, uh, that we've been seeing lately with the regenerative medicine. And it's, and it's basically because we have a big population of, of people uh, over the age of 65 these days. You know, we talk about the baby boomers, you know, and they're the ones that are now going to the, uh, to the orthopedist. And the orthopedist say, oh, yeah, you have osteoarthritis. Well, guess what? We're all going to get osteoarthritis. Right. But we may get it a lot quicker if we have an injury to our knee in years past. So like my left shoulder, I was a left handed pitcher. My left shoulder has a lot more osteoarthritis than my right shoulder. And I'm the right old age of 49. But my left shoulder looks like I'm 69 because I threw a baseball for 30 years. So more osteoarthritis in this shoulder. So if you have a right knee that's been injured, it's going to get osteoarthritis a lot quicker than the left knee. Right. And that's basically where the joint starts to collapse on, on, on itself. I showed that one x-ray of that patient that had a lot of osteoarthritis in her neck. That's because they had an injury, and now as they got older, it naturally starts to collapse on itself. So that happens pretty, uh, pretty quickly, and the joint is losing its lubrication. So just like your car, if it doesn't have oil, your joints are going to start dying too. So let's go to the next one. So typical uh, symptoms that uh, you may hear people talk about is they have pain when they're walking, standing movement. They have increased swelling. Limitation of the joint is a big deal. Um, again, if you don't move it, you're going to lose it. So doing something, if you have an elder parent, having them do something, even if they're, if they're sedentary, having them sit there and maybe move their arms around while they sit, or maybe do leg extensions or leg curls are a great thing. That's going to help them kind of, uh, um, get things moving a little bit. And it's going to do that brain body connection. We always like to say, if your brain and your spinal cord are, are making those connections, it's going to keep that brain sharp. So doing those things kind of help. Um, Falls are big in, in older patients these days. Uh, the, the, you know, 75% of these falls occurring when they're, when they're older. Um, and then a lot of patients don't recover from that. Uh, luckily, these days, Medicare is recognizing different types of procedures that you can do to kind of help these patients with that instead of just sending them for surgery. God forbid, if they have a injury and they need surgery, they need to go. I've sent many patients to surgery. I send many patients to, to different uh, doctors for them to get checked out, and they do have surgery. But, you know, Medicare and some of our insurance agents are, are – Medicare is trying to cut costs. They want to cut costs. So, basically, they're trying to find other procedures that are going to keep patients out of surgery and maybe prolong that surgery that's going to help them uh, sustain some of, the, some of the injuries that they may have. And healthcare costs uh, for falls and everything just keep going up. So, deviations in need. You may see a person walking bow-legged or, or, or knock-kneed. Those are, um, that's because they have an issue in that area that can cause low back pain. So a lot of these injuries, again, they lead to other issues down the road. So we see one injury and then it leads to the knee pain, then it leads to the ankle pain and all the way down the road. So a lot of these things uh, kind of come in combination. So I'll, uh, a patient will come in, they'll say, yeah, I have low back pain, but then my right knee started hurting and then my right ankle hurts. Well, that could be because your lower back. So maybe the lower back is the problem, but yet they say my knee hurts the most. So a lot of these things can, can happen in combination. So there's different things you can do, uh, whether you're doing it yourself. Go to the next slide, Sharon. Um, you can do, uh, you can do uh, injections like we talked about. You can do bracing. So the, the thing is we want joints to be mobile. We want them uh, to be um, fluid. We want them to move. But if you have a stability issue, so a stability issue would be like, so let's say your ankle, you twist your ankle all the time. Your ligaments aren't as tight as they used to be. The ligaments need, are now stretched like a rubber band. So what you need to do is create some stability there, especially if you're on your feet all day. If you're sitting behind a desk, you might not need a brace, uh, an ankle bracelet or ankle brace to be on there. But if you're walking around a lot, then you may want to put an ankle brace on there just until you get your stability back. Then you have to strengthen that injury. Remember, pain, get rid of the pain, stabilize the injury, and then strengthen. So if I have an acute injury, I want to stabilize, I want to, I want to get rid of the pain, maybe ice or heat. I want to stabilize the injury, and then I want to strengthen. So that's the way that goes. Um, go to the next slide. So examples of what bracing does or what uh, type of stuff does um, to help an injury. 
The first one with the red circle, that's, that's a knee that was basically osteoarthritis bone on bone on that side. Um, that's through an x-ray. X-rays are great because they tell a sign for bones. If you have a um, disc-related injury, you may want to get an MRI or maybe a shoulder injury. You may want to get an MRI, and uh, we can help you with uh, deciding what's best for that because MRIs show tissue. So they show the, the ligaments, the tendons. They show the muscle tears. They show the muscle sprains, that type of stuff. X-ray shows bone. So if you think you have a knee injury, you may want to get an MRI. If you're older, you may want to get an X-ray. So there's a fine line there. A lot of doctors go, hey, get the x-ray first. We'll rule out any type of pathology, whether it's bone, then we'll do the MRI. And plus, MRIs cost more, so the healthcare doesn't want to pay for it. So you want to do an x-ray first. Um, but that's after bracing with the green one. That little bit, I know it doesn't look like a lot, but that little bit is going to take a lot of pain and pressure off that joint. So let's go to the next one. So, you know, the main goal of a lot of things that you want to do is with chiropractic or physical medicine or massage therapy, what it is, is you want to stay out of surgery. You know, there's all types of treatments out there these days. You want to do, you can do supplementation like we talked about. You can do bracing. You can do any type of physical therapy or massage therapy or chiropractic. You can do some of the regenerative medicines um, that work really well and they're not painful. Um, again, uh, 20 years, uh, I, I have a good record of never killing somebody. So that's a good thing. I know that sounds very drastic, but again, you'd be surprised how many patients ask me if I've ever killed somebody. It's crazy, but it's true, right? So just some, you know, you, everything to avoid surgery or any type of procedure is good because once you cut something, and, and again, I'm not knocking surgery. If it's necessary, you need to do surgery. But once you cut something, you cannot go back from that. So, all right. So, you know, just examples of what um, things look like under video sporoscopy, which is a, it's a kind of a high tech x-ray. Um, you can take an x-ray under, under with motion with this type of thing. Um, so this is a knee with a uh, contrast dye going in there to make sure that you're in the right space. If your physician's not doing this and you're getting regenerative medicine done, that's not a good thing. Because how do you know if you're spending all this money on this regenerative medicine, stem cells or whatever you want, and you don't see a diagram that it's going in the joint capsule and that the joint capsule, the space is what you need to see, you may not be getting the, the most for your, for your buck. So I would, I would question that. But again, it gives the physician a better idea of where they're going and that they're in the correct space. So let's go to the next one. You know, again, this is a patient uh, getting x-ray taken. X-rays are pretty easy. They're harmless. Um, you get more UV light. And I will tell you this, you get more UV light from outside, especially in our Florida heat. Um, look at the UV index when the weathermen come on and they tell you it's a nine, that's pretty potent. So you're going to get more light from being out in the heat than you will from any type of x-ray, especially if it's a good x-ray machine. So x-rays are pretty, you know, pretty common for, uh, um, broken bones, things like that. Little Johnny fell off the, the swing set. You want to maybe get an x-ray. Um, and then again, if you have a, uh, spot where it may be a shoulder injury, you may want to get a, uh, MRI or a knee injury too. Let's go to the next one. Again, just a case study of, you know, what a patient looks like before they had any type of regenerative medicine and versus uh, an offloading brace. And it doesn't look like a big uh, discrepancy there, but again, quality of life. This is a 68-year-old patient. He wants to play with his kids he, or his grandkids. He wants to do the things that he used to do. Uh, chronic knee pain, you know, we want to eliminate that. And that's what you do with a lot of regenerative medicine or, or physical medicine type stuff. Let's go to the next one. 77-year-old uh, patient, again, just that little bit, and I know it does not look like a lot on that after, but that little bit has helped that patient achieve big time goals just from getting up, walking around. Maybe it's just for them to go to the grocery store. I don't know. Maybe it's for them to just get over and go see little Johnny, the, the great grandkids. I don't know. But it, improving quality of life, that's the key. Without drugs or surgery, that's the key. All right, next one. This was a, this, this, this uh, lady was kind of fun. She, her biggest thing is she, she uh, wanted to go to New York and walk around New York City with her, her sisters. That's what they did every year. So after a few treatments, got great results. She was ecstatic. Whether we cured it or not, probably not. Whether she has to have surgery down the road, I don't know, but we prolonged it. That's what we wanted to do. Next one. So most people don't realize that um, insurances cover a lot of services. Whether you want physical therapy, insurance covers it. You may have a copay. Whether you want chiropractic, insurance covers it. Whether you want some regenerative medicine procedures, insurance may cover it. What you want to do before you assume, just like anything, no matter what field you're, you want to ask if they take most insurances. Now, some doctors, I'll give you the, cl the clue, most doctor's offices don't take a lot of insurances. We take a lot. 
That's what I built my practice on. But most don't because they don't like what they're getting paid by the insurance company. So they will get off that plan. And so that's why they don't take your insurance and they force you kind of to pigeonhole you into another office. So ask them if they take your insurance, no matter where you're going, the medical doctor, the dermatologist, the whoever, ask them if they take your insurance. And if not, do they have an affordable cash plan? Most will work something out with you one way or another. So, all right, next one. So here's some of the buzzwords I told you earlier. PRP is platelet-rich plasma. It just tells you a little bit about what they do. Um, there's no harm really, no foul with platelet-rich plasma. And actually with stem cell either, stem cells a lot more expensive. But with PRP, we're drawing your blood. We collect that blood. We spin your blood. And in that blood is the protein-rich plasma, which separates. We then re-inject that back in the injured area. So again, no harm, no foul. Worst case scenario, and I hate to say this, is you are out money. But what the body does is it takes that protein-rich plasma and it tries to regenerate that back into the injured area. And that's a pretty cool thing because if it gets any regeneration out of that, then the body goes, ooh, I kind of like this. And it starts making better collagen fibers that helps produce better stuff for that injured area. Um, stem cells are pretty uh, amazing because they uh, take um, biochemical properties and, and chemical cell makeup and they go in there and they regenerate that same process and, it, and it's a little more on an advanced uh, level. But again, we, PRP is, is one of the big ones. They even use those for facial fillers, for scar tissue, things like that. Aesthetics are using them a lot more with PRP. And again, no harm, no foul. Even if you're, I'm a big baby afraid of needles, but I've done PRP in my shoulder many a times and it works great. Next slide. Just some uh, stuff, you know, um, PRP injections are free of steroids and medications. So some of the stuff is, is, you know, doesn't have any medication in it. Um, like even some of the osteoarthritis products we use, hyaluronic acid, your body makes hyaluronic acid. So when you use hyaluronic acid into the knee, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. Um, in some of those cases where you have a lot of degeneration or osteoarthritis, it may not work, but the hyaluronic acid is not going to affect your knee in any way, shape, or form. So you want to make sure that people are using things that don't have a lot of medication in them. So, all right, next slide. So just some comparisons, and, and let's go to the next slide. Um, this is my shoulder. Uh, I had a, um, I had, uh, I had multiple tears in my shoulder from playing baseball, and then from what I do, my job is very physical. Um, so I was getting injections in my shoulder. And like I said, I'm a big baby. That looks very ugly, that top one, because that needle is very deep in there. But that needle is in there in that joint capsule where I'm having all my injuries. If you look to the top of that needle, the, the part, the bony part you can see, that is the, um, uh, that's where the, um, I just lost my uh, train of thought. That's the, the rotator cuff portion up top. And that's where the labrum is. That's what I wanted, the labrum. And the labrum attaches your, your humerus bone to the shoulder and kind of keeps it intact. So people that have labrum tears, that's where you want to be when you're doing these injections, right? The bottom one is just before. And then we use a, a lidocaine. So most doctors use a lidocaine to kind of numb the area before or topical type of um, analgesic. So let's go to the next one. So there's a contrast dye in my shoulder. That is, all that is is dye, just like you would, you know, uh, uh, dye uh, a red food coloring, whatever. Um, basically making sure that we're in that chemical or in that, in that joint space. So that chemical is basically – uh, making, making sure that the space is not broken through. So that way we know we're getting the injection in the right, the PRP in the right spot. Let's go to the next one. And this one, you know, I, I, I try to take out as many advertisements as possible, but just a classic uh, tagline, you know? Um, so, you know, that's basically all I have for, for what we do and kind of how, how physical medicine can help. I would always say this, that if you have a question about some sort of healthcare issue, Ask them questions. WebMD is not the best. And a lot of things on the internet will scare you to thinking you may have something more. So ask a, you know, somebody that you know, like, and trust, just like you would do with anything in your house. You know, pain is the motivator with a lot of things we do in general, whether it's we want to, we have to buy a new car or we need new flooring because something happened or whatever. Um, and so when you're doing that, make sure that you make the right decision and you get all the facts first in whatever type of medical decision you're going to make or whether it's a financial decision and we have great financial or whatever it is you're doing, try to, try to get your, in, your, uh, your information uh, before you make that decision. So I hope it was informational. I'm done.
Thank you so much, Tommy. We really appreciate your time. I know you're really busy and you're doing this on your lunch hour. Um, we were going to ask if there were any questions to put them in chat, but does anybody have any, any questions for Tommy? Hey, Tommy, this is Paul. Hey, Paul. Just a question for you. My daughter's in her 30s. She has scoliosis. Is it too late? Yeah, I mean, honestly, Paul, with scoliosis, we always say at skeletal maturity, probably 17, 18 in females, a little bit later in males, that once the spine gets to where it's at, it's not going to affect her. But what happens is it starts compensating again. So her spine's not going to change anymore. It may degenerate a little quicker than more normal, but it's not, it's not going to affect her. I mean, she's pretty stable where she's at. Um, she may have some muscle skeletal issues, like uh, her muscles get a little tighter. She has more difficulty breathing. But it, as far as, you know, is it going to advance her, or is, is it going to decrease her age? Expect to probably not, no. But yeah, okay. it's, it is. Unfortunately, after the, about the age of 17, I have a patient right now that's uh, 15 at, and I think we're catching it before she hit her growth spurt. So I'm pretty excited about that. But um, once we hit that skeletal maturity, there's not much you can do for scoliosis except for maintain it and stabilize it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Good seeing you. Good seeing you.